Uh, welcome to everybody that's here. It's welcome. Uh, welcome to all the people that join us uh, by our live stream and by our conference call. I, I have to say welcome to them. And, and uh, it's good to have you all fellowshipping with us uh, this Sabbath day. Uh, now, uh, as I said, we're going to do what we do here, and that is we are going to... Uh, deal with a lesson here. I uh, I noticed I hadn't dealt with the Holy Ghost in a while. So I am going to deal with the Holy Ghost today. And I titled the lesson the the Holy Ghost, the messenger and the message. When, you know when you read in the Bible, well actually when you read in the Bible about the Holy Ghost, it it refers to it sometimes as being an entity because it uses the word he. And then sometimes it refers to uh, people being filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, we are going to show you what this entity is and we are going to show you uh, what man is filled with. Now, when you uh, start dealing with this Holy Ghost, you are... Uh, you're dealing with something pertaining to the word of God or to the will of God because it always has something to do with God's word or with God's will. Now, I want to begin this lesson in, in Deuteronomy, the um, 18th chapter, because... I want to start here because I want to show you where the word came from. I will show you that uh, the Father, he gave the word to Jesus. And then Jesus would give it to the Holy Ghost. That's why I'm going this route. So to help you understand what this Holy Ghost is uh, that Jesus gave the word to. And we'll start in Deuteronomy chapter 18. We're going to begin reading at verse 15. Deuteronomy 18, and we'll pick it up at verse 15. Go ahead and read, brother. <clears throat> the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee. Now, this is Moses. He's telling the people, the Lord your God is going to raise up a prophet from the midst of you. Go ahead and read. Of thy brethren, uh -huh. like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. Go ahead. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb, in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee. And will put my words in his mouth. Go ahead. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Now, uh, Moses saying to the people, Lord, your God going to raise up a prophet like unto him. And the Lord will put his words in this prophet's mouth. And he will speak what the Lord commands him. Go ahead. Continue reading. And it shall come to pass uh -huh. that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, mm -hmm. I will require it of him. So now he says, uh, whoever will not listen to the words that this prophet will speak in his name, the Lord said he will require it of them. Now, uh, this prophet, it is Jesus. Let's go to John chapter 12. And we'll pick it up at verse 44. John 12, and we'll begin reading at verse 44. And we're going to just show you uh, that Jesus is this prophet and show you as well. Uh, that the Lord put his, uh, put his words in this prophet's mouth. And he said that, uh, that this prophet would only speak what the Lord commands him. Now let's go to uh, 12 and uh, John 12 and pick it up at verse 44. And I'm going to show you what Jesus said here. I'll start reading at verse 44. Go ahead and read. Jesus cried and said, mm -hmm. He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, uh -huh. but on him that sent me. Because the doctrine that Jesus came with, it wasn't his. It was the fathers that sent him. So that's why Jesus is saying, uh, he that believeth on me, they don't believe on me. 
But they believe on the one that sent me. Go ahead and read on. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. Go ahead and read. I am come a light into the world, mm -hmm. that so whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Go ahead. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I am not come to judge the world, but to save the world. Mm -hmm. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Go ahead and read. For I have not spoken of myself, uh -huh. but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, uh -huh. what I should say and what I should speak. So Jesus said, you know, I'm not speaking of myself. The Father that sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And this is that prophet that Moses was talking about in Deuteronomy chapter 18, uh, when he said the Lord will put his words in that prophet's mouth when he only speak. Uh, what I command him to speak. So now Jesus is that prophet. And as he is saying here. Uh, you know uh, the, 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 the one that sent me. He gave me a commandment. What I should say and what I should speak. So when you hear Jesus speaking. You are listening to the words that the father gave unto him. Go ahead read that next verse. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Now his commandment is life everlasting. Because if you follow that commandment. If you will listen to these words. And you will be obedient unto these words. And, and, and then it will get you everlasting life. Go ahead. Continue read. Whatsoever I speak therefore. Uh -huh. Even as the father said unto me. Go ahead. So I speak. Whatever the father said unto me. He says that is what I speak. So now. He is again that prophet that the Lord uh, uh, spoke about. Uh, uh, by the mouth of Moses. So now the father gave the words unto Jesus. Then uh, uh, Jesus came. And, and, and he's really. The one that gave it unto the Holy Ghost. And we're going to understand what that Holy Ghost is uh, that he gave him unto. But first, let's go and read something here uh, from the New Compact Bible Dictionary. Uh, and we are going to read uh, from page uh, 219. Because I just want to uh, show you something here. Uh, that Because this Holy Ghost has been around. You know, you, you don't hear it referred to as the Holy Ghost until you get into the New Testament. But it was spoken of even in the Old Testament. But it was not called the Holy Ghost. It was the call of the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God. Let me find this uh, page 219 right quick so we can read that. So that you will uh, you'll understand what I'm saying here. Uh, page 219 and pick it up. Uh, I'll just read there uh, what's underlined in red. Go ahead me. Holy Ghost uh -huh. in King James Version is usually Holy Spirit. In so other now in the King James, which is what we are reading from, is usually referred to as the Holy Spirit or maybe just the Spirit. Go ahead and read. In other versions. Uh -huh. so, now, oh, go ahead. Did you that finish? That was it. Yes, sir. Okay, so now it is referred to as the Holy Spirit. That is what it was referred to in the Old Testament. Uh, uh, but uh, and sometimes just simply the Spirit or the Spirit of God. So now. When you get in uh, to the uh, New Testament, it started to be referred to as the Holy Ghost. Let's start reading now at John chapter uh, 14, and we'll pick it up at verse 10. And I'm going to show you what uh, Jesus said uh, regarding his Holy Ghost here. Start reading at John 14, and began reading at verse 10, 14 and 10. So now, we have the word in which uh, the Father gave unto Jesus. Let's start reading at uh, 14 and pick it up at verse 10. Go ahead and read. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, uh -huh. and the Father in me? Go ahead. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. So now he said the words I speak, I don't speak of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, uh, he doeth the works. Go ahead and read on. Believe me uh -huh. that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Go ahead. Or else believe me for the very works sake. Uh -huh. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Go ahead. And greater works than these shall he do, uh -huh. because I go unto my Father. Go ahead. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Now he said, whatever you ask in his name, that will he do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So, you know, people ask me sometimes, when you pray, who do you pray to? You pray to the Father, uh, but you ask it in Jesus' name. Yes, sir. And he says here, you know, whatever you ask the Father in my name, that will I do. 
and that have to do according to his will as well. Uh, I just thought I need to tell you that because you may say something, well, I asked in Jesus' name and I didn't receive. Well, also the book tell you whatever you ask according to his will, that will he do. Other Absolutely. scriptures tell you that, but go ahead, continue reading. 14. Uh -huh. If ye ask anything in my name, I will do it. Go ahead and read. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Now he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Everybody talk about, oh, how they love Jesus. Yes, but they'll turn right around and say they don't have to obey the commandments. But Jesus is making it very clear here. If you love me, then you will keep my commandments. In fact, that is love. Yes. That's how you show love for God by being obedient unto his commandments. Because yes, everybody want to get away from the law according to the letter. And they want to try and say we are under the law of love. Well, the law of love is being obedient unto the Lord's commandments. People, that is the law of love, and that is the law that we've had from the very beginning. Go ahead, keep reading. And I will pray the Father, uh -huh. and he shall give you another comfort. Now he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Then I'm going to pray to the Father, and he will give you another comforter. And he's in the book going to tell you what that comforter is. Go ahead, keep reading. That he may abide with you go, forever. Go ahead. Even the spirit of truth. Now he said it's confident. Which is the Holy Ghost. He calls it here even the spirit of truth. Because it is the spirit. We're going to find out it is the angel that brings the truth. That is what this Holy Ghost is. That is all it is. Simple, plain and simple. It is the angel that brings the truth here. So now he said even the spirit of truth. Go ahead and read on. Whom the world cannot receive. Uh -huh. Because it seeth him not. Go ahead. Neither knoweth him. Uh -huh. But ye know him. For he dwelleth in you and shall be in you. Now he said he dwelleth in you and he shall be in you, meaning that he will be among you. Just as he was with the people uh, when the Lord brought them out of Egypt. And we're going to read a little bit of that a little bit later. But right now, skip down to uh, verse 21. Go ahead and read, brother. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, uh -huh. he, he it is that loveth me. Now he said again, the one that hath my commandments and keep. Then keep them, that is the one that loved me. Go ahead and read on. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, uh -huh. and I will love him, and will manifest myself in him. Go ahead and read. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, uh -huh. Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Now Judas has said, said unto him, they ain't talking about Judas Iscariot, the one that betrayed him, but... He said, now how is it that you will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Go ahead and read. Jesus answered and said unto him, uh -huh. If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come, in, come unto him and make our abode with him. Well, you know, Jesus just keeps saying it over and over. Sooner or later, somebody going to get the message. Yes, if you love me, if a man love me, then he will keep my commandments. And, and, and the Father will come and make our abode with him. Everybody want to throw away the commandment. If you ain't got them, then you don't love the Lord. I don't care how much you say it with your mouth. It's your actions that says whether or not you love the Lord. Absolutely. And you show that by being obedient unto his commandments. Because everybody want to throw them away. But you can't throw them away, people. The Lord gave them. And, and uh, if you love him and if you expect to get life eternal, then you're going to have to obey him. Go ahead and read on. He that loveth me not, uh -huh. keepeth not my sins. Well, he said the one that loveth him not, then those are the ones that do not obey his saying. Go ahead, read on. And the word which ye hear is not mine, uh -huh. but the Father which sent me. And he said again, the word which you hear is not my word, but it is the Father that sent me. Jesus did not come with his own agenda. He came with the agenda uh, which the Father gave unto him. He sent him, gave him the words to speak. And then when he speaks those words, he is not speaking his words. He is speaking the words of the Father. Go ahead and read on. These things have I spoken unto you, uh -huh. being yet present with you. Go ahead. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Now he said it's Comforter that he said, uh, which is the Holy Ghost, which he uh, called earlier, of uh, the word of truth. Uh, 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 go ahead and read on. Whom the Father will send in my name. Who the Father will send, he said, in my name. Go ahead and read on. He shall teach you all things uh -huh. and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So now uh, Jesus said uh, this, this Holy Ghost it's going to teach you all things and bring all things into your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. That's what this Holy Ghost is going to do people. This Holy Ghost is going to teach you. And he's going to bring all things into remembrance whatsoever that he has said unto you. That's what Jesus said his Holy Ghost 
uh, will do. Now let's go further. Let's go over to uh, John chapter 15 now. And we'll pick it up at uh, verse 26. In fact, we're going to just read verse 26. So now we have this Holy Ghost, which is the spirit of truth, which is the comforter, that the Lord said he will sin and he will teach you all things and he will bring all things into your remembrance whatsoever he has said unto you. So now when you get this Holy Ghost, that means you are starting to get some understanding of the word of God. That is what this Holy Ghost really does. It doesn't make you jump and shout. But it, it, it will teach you all things and bring all things into your remembrance. Go, uh, go ahead, pick it up at chapter 15 now, and uh, read one verse, uh, verse uh, 26. Go ahead and read. But when the Comforter is come, uh -huh. whom I will send unto you from the Father, go ahead. even the Spirit of truth. Now, even the Spirit of truth. So this Comforter, this Holy Ghost, he ain't dealing with nothing but the truth. You know, if somebody tell you they're speaking by the Holy Ghost, and they're not bringing you the true word of God. They ain't speaking by the Holy Ghost. Right. They're speaking by another spirit out there. Because there's another one out there as well. But now, if, but if, if they're not teaching the truth, if they're not dealing with the truth, then it is not uh, the Holy Ghost. It is not the spirit of truth. Because people say the Holy Ghost told me to say such and such and such a thing. Well, is it what thus said the Lord? Well, if it ain't what thus said the Lord, then it wasn't the comfort. It was not the Holy Ghost. That gave it unto you. Okay. It was the other spirit that gave it unto you. Go ahead. Keep reading. But when the comforter is come. Uh -huh. Whom I will send unto you from the father. Uh -huh. Even the spirit of truth. Which proceedeth from the father. Uh -huh. He shall testify of me. So now he said he will testify of me. Uh, let's go now uh, to uh, John chapter 16. And we'll pick it up at uh, verse 5. So now Jesus said he would send his Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost would be from the Father. So now let's uh, look at John chapter 16 now. And we'll pick it up at verse 5 and show you what else uh, he says about this Holy Ghost. All these things going to help us identify who this Holy Ghost is here. Because people always talk about the Holy Ghost, but almost nobody ever identifies it. You need to know what this Holy Ghost is uh, so that you will understand what this, and what this Holy Ghost will do. So that you will understand when this Holy Ghost is dealing with you or whether or not some other spirit is dealing with you. Because people said the spirit told me such and such a thing. Well, I said, does it line up with the word of God? Well, well, no. Well, it ain't the Holy Ghost. It's some other spirit. Go ahead. Start reading at uh, 16 and pick it up at verse 5. Go ahead and read, bro. But now. I go my way to him that sent me. Uh -huh. And none of you asketh me whether thou goest. Go ahead. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Now he said, I'm going to go back to the one that sent me because the father has sent him. And this is just before he's about to go back to the father. And he said, uh, uh, you know, uh, because I have said these things, then your, your, your heart is filled with sorrow. Go ahead and read on. Nevertheless, uh -huh. I tell you the truth. Go ahead. It is expedient for you that I go away. Uh -huh. For if I go not away, go ahead. the comforter will not come unto you. Uh -huh. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So now he said, if I depart, then I'm going to send this comfort unto you, uh, which is the Holy Ghost, which even is the spirit of truth. Skip down to verse 13 now. Go ahead and read. How be it, uh -huh. when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you unto all truth. So now, you know when the spirit of truth come, he going to guide you into all truth. Mm -hmm. Truth is the word of God, people. That's what truth so. is. So if it ain't dealing with the word of God, then you ain't dealing with the comforter. You are not dealing with the Holy Ghost. That's what I keep saying, because that is how it is. If they bring you anything that is not dealing with the word of God, then it, it is not the comforter, it is not the Holy Ghost. It is not the spirit of truth that is bringing you that. Because he only deals with the truth. Go ahead. Continue to read. For he shall not speak of himself. Go ahead. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he's not going to speak of himself, but whatsoever he hear, that will he speak. The Father gave it unto Jesus. Jesus said, I'm going to send you this Holy Ghost in the Father's name. So now, the Holy Ghost, it will be a messenger. But the message came from the Father that he gave to Jesus that Jesus would give to the Holy Ghost. Go ahead, continue to read. And he will show you things to come. And not only will he uh, teach you all things, but he even will show you things 
that are yet to come. Go ahead. What verse are we? Starting 14. Go ahead and read. He shall glorify me. Uh -huh. For he shall receive of mine. Go ahead. And shall show it unto you. See what Jesus said? He going to glorify me. He going to receive of mine. And he going to show it unto you. But then Jesus is going to tell you what, what he got. He got it from the Father. It ain't really his. But it is the Father that gave it to him. So it all started out with the Father giving it unto Jesus. And Jesus letting you know he would give it to the Holy Ghost. And then the Holy Ghost, he would bring it unto man. Go ahead, read that next verse. All things that the Father hath are mine. Now, see what Jesus said? All things that the Father hath, they are his. Go ahead, read on. Therefore said I, uh -huh. that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. He will take of, uh, Jesus said, he will take of mine, and he will show it unto you. So now this Holy Ghost, it is a messenger. And I'm going to show you who it is that the Lord used to bring messages. Let's start reading here. Let's go over to, uh, let's go over to, uh, well, we're going to read something first from the Revealed Bible Dictionary. Then we are going to go to uh, Hebrews chapter uh, 1. But now we want to read something from the Revealed Bible Dictionary. And we are going to read from page uh, 36 here. Then we're going to use the, uh, we're going to use the scripture uh, uh, to, uh, to show you that this lines up with the scripture. Start reading here. Uh, angel here. And then read what's on the line and read. Go ahead and read. Angel. Uh -huh. A messenger from God. Now he said an angel is a messenger from God. You have different angels and they have different duties. But then God used the angels for, as his messengers. Remember this Holy Ghost now that he's telling you. Uh, uh, this spirit of truth uh, that uh, he's going to. Come from God, and he's going to deliver the message. Go ahead, continue to read. Though the word itself, Hebrew, Malach, uh -huh. Greece, angel Angelos, can refer to a human messenger uh -huh. in the New Testament, it usually means a heavenly being. Go ahead. One of a special class created by God uh -huh. to serve him. Go ahead. The New Testament describes angels as ministering spirits. So now it said the New Testament describes angels as ministering spirits. But also the Old Testament describes them as ministering spirits as well. You know, angels, they are just spirits. The good angels, they are ministering spirits sent forth to minister unto those that would be as to salvation. That is, a, that is a part of their duty. You have other angels like warring angels, uh, 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 like Michael and all of that. But the angels, he's telling you here, they are ministering spirits. That's what they are. Remember this Holy Ghost, he was called the spirit of truth. In other words, the angels... That brings the truth. Go ahead. Keep reading. Sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. So now the angel he's telling you is sent to those that will inherit salvation. Go ahead. Read a little bit more of that. Both testaments uh -huh. cast angels in similar roles. Now he said both testaments, whether you're dealing with the old or whether you're dealing with the do. If both of them cast angels in similar roles, in other words, they are ministering spirits sent forth to minister unto those that will be as the salvation. Did you finish that yet? No, sir. Go ahead and finish it. Angels have communicated special messages mm -hmm. to God's saints. Now, he said angels, they have communicated special uh, messengers to God's saints. Because for the most part, it was the angels that brought the message unto the prophets here. Let's go over to uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 1. And we'll pick it up at uh, verse 1. Hebrews 1. Uh, and we'll pick it up at uh, verse 1. Because angels, they truly are ministering spirits. And God used them for messengers uh, to deliver his words unto those that will be heirs uh, to salvation. We want to start reading here at Hebrews chapter 1. And we'll pick it up at verse 1. And we're going to read uh, from the uh, Bible what we just read from the Bible dictionary. Let's start reading at Hebrews uh, one and pick it up at verse one. Hebrews one and one. Okay, when you get it, brother, go ahead and read it. God, mm -hmm. who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, uh -huh. hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, go ahead. whom he hath appointed heir of all things, uh -huh. by whom also he made the world. So now, you know, it's just letting you know here that, uh, 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 Jesus was appointed heir to all things and that he created everything that was created because the Godhead is made up of two beings. They're made up of the one that became known as the Father and, it's, and the one that became known as the Son. And I know some teach that the Holy Ghost, he is of the Godhead as well. 
But that is not the teaching of the Bible. He's going to tell you about the holy angels right here. So now, go ahead, continue to read. Who being in the brightness uh -huh. of his glory. Go ahead. And the express image of his person. Uh -huh. And upholding all things by the word of his power. Go ahead. When he had in himself purged our sins. Mm -hmm. Set down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So now, you know, and it's dealing with when Jesus came, died, purged our sin, then ascended back to the Father. And now he's sitting at the right hand of the Father as high priest after the order of Melchizedek. But now, go ahead and read on. Keep reading. Being made so much better than the angels. Because you know, I've even heard it said that Jesus is an angel. No, he's not an angel. Because they use, uh, they use Michael and said that is referring to Jesus. Now, Michael is talking about the archangel. And it's telling you right here that Jesus, you know, after he purged, I was saying, sat on the right hand of the majesty in heaven, being made so much better than the angels. Go ahead, continue to read. As he hath by inheritance. Obtained a more excellent name than they. And he by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. He's going to tell you what he's talking about here. Go ahead, keep reading. Five. Uh huh. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, uh -huh. Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Now, which of the angels did he say that? Because, you know, I like to read this because you have people that teach the, uh, they call themselves teaching the Godhead. They say, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. They call it the Holy Trinity. Well, where there is a trinity, and it is holy. Because the Father is holy, Jesus is holy, and the Holy Ghost is holy. But the thing is, the Holy Ghost is not a part of the Godhead. That's where they mess it up at. I ain't going to kick against the trinity. I don't use that term too much, because I know everybody may uh, uh, fall into this thing the way it's typically taught today. It's typically taught that the Holy Ghost is one of the Godhead, but it is not. He's telling you right here about the angel. Read that fifth verse again. Go ahead and read. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, uh -huh. Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. What angel did he say that to? You know, for the people that want to make my, uh, Michael be Jesus, which Michael is the archangel. But unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day that I begot thee. Go ahead, keep reading. And again, uh -huh. I will be to him a father. Go ahead. And he shall be to me a son. And I will be to him a father, and he will be to me a son. That's what he said of his son, Jesus. Didn't say that of any of the angels. Go ahead and read on. And again, uh -huh. when he bringeth the first begotten into the world, Go ahead. he saith, uh -huh. and let all the angels of God worship him. And he him. said, let all the angels of God worship him. Now, he's going to tell you what the angels are. You know, Jesus is the son. He was actually... Uh, he was actually one of the members of the Godhead. And then he gave that up and took up on him the form of a servant made in the likeness of men so that he might die from the sins of man. But then he picked that back up again. But now, I'm going to but uh, uh, and when he became the son, but now skip down uh, to uh, verse uh, 13. He's going to tell you uh, what the angels are. Go ahead and read on. 13. Uh-huh. But to which of the angels said he at any time? Which of the angels said he at any time? Go ahead and read on. Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Go ahead and read. And they not all, are, they, are, not, are they not all ministering spirits? See what they said? Not, are, are they not all ministering spirits? That's what angels are, the good angels. They, all of them are spirits, whether they're good angels or evil angels. But the good angels, they are ministering spirits. And he's going to tell you what. Uh, uh, what they were sent to minister unto. Go ahead and read on. Sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. They're serving spirit. That's what a minister is, a servant. They're serving spirits sent forth to minister unto them that will be heirs unto salvation. That's why he's called the spirit of truth. Because he's only going to bring you the truth. Let's go now to, uh, let's go now to uh, 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 Revelation chapter 1. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. So we got the Father that gave the word unto Jesus. And we got Jesus that gave the word unto the Holy Ghost. But I'm going to show you what this Holy Ghost is that he gave the word unto. Let's start reading at Revelation chapter uh, 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 1. And we will pick it up at uh, verse 1. You know this Holy Ghost is not so mysterious when you read the Bible. When you understand what it is that this Holy Ghost is supposed to do. And then you find out who uh, who did that. Then you can understand 
who this Holy Ghost is. Start reading at uh, start reading at Revelations chapter one and pick it up at verse one, one and one. Go ahead and read. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. See what it said? It is the revelation of Jesus Christ. People use the term John the Revelator. Well, John was not the Revelator. John was the recorder. He wrote down what he was told to write down. So now he said, uh, the re it is the revelation of Jesus Christ. But notice where he got it from. Go ahead and read on. To show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. He said, a revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him. To show unto his servants the things which must shortly come come to pass. So you know this revelation that God gave unto him, he going to show these things unto his servant. You know, because one, uh, uh, one asked, how can, you know, what is it that you going to uh, uh, show to your servants and not show unto the world? Well, he going to show, uh, he, he going to give these revelations unto his servants. That's who going to understand these things. Because he was sent, uh, uh, he sent the angel, rather, to give these things unto his servants. Go ahead, keep reading. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Well, there you have all three. You got the Father, you got the Son, and you got the Holy Ghost, which really is. It is the angel, the ministering spirit that sent forth the minister unto them uh, uh, that will be as unto Sabbath. Well, notice what it says here. He sent and signified it. Signified means to make something known. He sent the the uh, 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 the the revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must come to pass. And he sent and signified it or made known of it by his angel to his servant John. And this is what John did. Go ahead and read on. Who bear record of the word of God. Now, what did John do? He bear record of the word of God. But it came from the Father that Jesus, uh, that the Father gave unto Jesus, that Jesus gave unto the angel, that the angel gave unto John, and John bear record of the word of God. Go ahead, continue reading. And of the testimony of Jesus Christ. And of the testimony of Jesus Christ. So we are dealing with the angel here. That is the third one in the Trinity. But, I, but let me be very clear, because I don't want somebody to leave out of here and say, Brother Daniel said that the, uh, 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 that, that, that the Holy Ghost is of the Godhead. That ain't what I said. Three is... A trinity is three eighty. What do you got? The uh, the Father, the Son, and the and the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Angel. But the angel again is not a part of the Godhead. Whenever you start reading about the Godhead, it only deals with the Father and the Son. That's right. The angel is just simply the messenger. That is all that he. That is all that he. Uh, start reading now. What what where do we stop at? Ending two. Uh, we did we finish too? Um, no, sir. Go ahead and finish. It. And of all things that he saw. Now, uh, 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 keep reading. Go ahead and keep reading. Blessed is he that readeth, mm -hmm. and they that hear the words of this prophecy. Go ahead. To keep those things which are written therein, for the time he is at hand. Now he said, "Blessed is the one that read." You know, if people want to make it. You don't need really need to do too much reading. But he said, "Now blessed is the one that readeth and hear the words of this prophecy." He said, but even the time is at hand. I can truly say the time is at hand. Now, for real. Because uh, with the things that's happening now, the, the time is... Re Revelation is just jumping off the pages right now. Yes, Go ahead. Keep reading. Yes, Four. Uh-huh. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia. Go ahead. Grace be unto you and peace from him which is and, and which was and which is to come. Now, uh, John, uh, 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 to the seven ch uh, churches which are in Asia. Grace unto you and peace unto him which is and which was and which is to come. And, we're, and, and what we are waiting on right now is for him to come. Go ahead, keep reading. And from the seven spirits uh -huh. which are before his throne. Now in the seven spirits which are before his throne and these seven spirits, they are none other than the seven angels. Skip down now to, uh, skip down now to uh, verse 9. Go ahead, read on. I, John, uh -huh. who also am your brother and companion in tribulation Go ahead. and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, uh -huh. was in the isles that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, John said, I was there on the island that is called Patmos, 
And he said he was there for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. But the Lord in his mind injected him way into the future. And that is what you are about to read. He, he injected him all the way down into this generation. Go ahead, keep reading. I was in the spirit uh -huh. on the Lord's day. He said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Well, we still waiting on the Lord's day. This Lord's day ain't talking about Sunday, by the way. Either. That's right, brother. Amen. So everybody don't want to throw away the Sabbath. You know, we don't do Sabbath no more. Now we do the Lord's day. And they like to read this. Well, this Lord's day ain't talking about no particular day or week. That's it's right. talking about a, a certain period of time uh, 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 and dealing with things that will happen just before the coming of the Lord, which is... Uh, which is much, what much of Revelation is dealing with here. So he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Go ahead, key read. And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Go ahead, read. Saying, uh -huh. I am Alpha and Omega. Go ahead. The first and the last. Uh -huh. And what thou seest, write in a book. And now he said, I am Alpha and I'm Omega. And he said, John, John, what you see, you write down in the book. And guess what? You're looking at the book that he wrote Amen. it down. In. That's right. Amen. Because he was given the message. And all he did was record it, the message. He said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I was there in the Isle of Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Keep reading. And send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. Go ahead. Unto Ephesus. Now he said, you send it unto the seven churches uh, which are in Asia. And he's telling you what they are. Go ahead and read on. Unto Smyrna. Go ahead. And unto Pergamos, uh -huh. and unto Tyria, and unto Sardis, uh -huh. and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Go ahead. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, uh -huh. and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Go ahead, me. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, uh -huh. clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Skip down to uh, skip down to uh, 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 verse. Uh, skip down to verse seventeen. Go ahead, read. And when I saw him, mm -hmm. I fell at his feet dead. Go ahead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, uh -huh. Fear not. I am the first and the last. Go ahead, read. I am he that liveth and was dead. Go ahead, read. And behold. I am alive forevermore. Uh -huh. Amen. Go ahead, me. And have the keys of hell and of death. Uh -huh. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Now he said, write the things that you've seen, the things that are, and the things that shall be uh, hereafter. Uh, because that is what the Holy Ghost is supposed to even reveal unto you, the things that are yet to come. Even the thing, and this is the Lord here, uh, 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 dealing by the hand of the angel, or by the hand of of the Holy Ghost, we'll call it. Go ahead and read on. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand. Go ahead. And the seven golden candlesticks. Uh -huh. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Uh -huh. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Now, go on into, uh, go on into uh, chapter 2. And we're going to pick it up at... Uh, well, pick, uh, 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 chapter 2 and pick it up at... Uh, Pick it up at verse 7, because we're dealing with the angels here. That's what we're dealing with here. And, 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 and these angels, they are ministering spirits here, sent forth to minister unto those that will be as the salvation. Pick it up at verse 7. Go ahead and read. He that hath an ear, mm -hmm. let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Now, the one that have an ear, he said, let them hear what the Spirit saying unto the church. Go ahead, finish that verse. To him that overcometh Go ahead. will I give to eat of the tree of life, uh -huh. which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Now he said things to the other church. We're going to read them as well. But he said the one that overcome, uh, I will give him uh, to eat of the tree of life, which in the midst is in the midst of the paradise of God. Skip down now to uh, verse 11. We're going to just read a couple of things here about uh, what was said. Go ahead. Read verse 11. Go ahead. He that hath an ear, uh -huh. let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now again, he said, he that have an ear, let him hear yes. what the Spirit said unto the church. I'm going to show you again in a little bit what the Spirit is that spoke. Go ahead. Finish that verse. He that overcometh uh -huh. shall not be heard of the second death. Now he said, the one that overcome, he will not be heard of the second death. So, you know, he's telling that. He, he, he's giving the message Unto those that will be as the salvation. You know, he's telling you what will happen. You overcome. You will not be heard of the second death. And if you, uh, uh, you, you overcome, uh, uh, he will give you of the tree of life that is in the midst of the God. Skip down to verse 17. Go ahead and read. 
He that hath an ear to hear, Go ahead. let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Again, he said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Go ahead and finish that verse. To him that overcometh. To the one that overcome. Go ahead and read. Will I give to eat of the hidden manna. Now he said, if you listen to this stuff, yeah. and if you do this stuff and you obey it, you will become heirs to eternal salvation. He's telling you stuff that you need to do in order to become heirs. Uh, to eternal salvation. He's saying it to the churches here, but it applies to us as well. Go ahead and finish that verse. And we'll give him a white stone, uh -huh. and in the stone a new name written, go ahead. which no man knoweth, saveth he that receiveth it. Now let's go over to Revelation chapter 22 here, and we're going to just sum it up about the spirit of speaking unto the churches to make it very clear, uh, uh, you know, who this is that uh, is dealing here with the churches. Let's start reading at... Uh, at uh, 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 Revelation chapter 22, and we're going to read just one verse, verse 16. Go ahead and read it, bro. I, Jesus, uh -huh. have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. See what Jesus said? I, Jesus, I sent mine angel mm -hmm. to testify unto you these things that are said in the church. I thought he sent the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? The Holy Ghost and the angel, they are one and the same. So he letting you know who it is that he sent. I sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. Go ahead and finish that verse and we'll move on. I am the root and the offspring of David. Uh -huh. And the bright and morning star. And yes he is. He is all of that. He is the root and the offspring of David. He was before David and he was after David. He was before David in the God form. And he came through David in the man form. We got plenty of Bible for that. But that is not what this lesson is about. But now, let's go over to uh, Acts chapter 8, and we'll pick it up at uh, verse 26, Acts 8, and we're going to begin reading at verse 26, and I'm going to show you again uh, that this, uh, this angel and this spirit here uh, uh, is one and the same, a a Acts uh, chapter 8, and we want to begin reading at, uh, at uh, verse 26, 8 and 26. Okay. Go ahead and read. Bro. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying. So now the angel had said of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, I'm going to show you that this angel, he is also referred to as the spirit, because the angel and the spirit, they are one and the same. So uh, keep reading. I, uh, and then the angel said unto Philip, go ahead and read on. Arise, uh -huh. and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem, uh -huh. unto Gaza, which is desert. Now, and the angel is telling Philip to go down uh, 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 to Gaza, which is desert. But guess why the angel is sending him there? The angels are sending him there because he's going to come across one that will be as unto salvation. Mm. That is why he's being sent. And notice... Uh, uh, what was said and what verse out? Starting 27. Go ahead me. And he arose uh -huh. and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, uh -huh. queen of the Ethiopians, uh -huh. who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Uh -huh. was, now then, now he's going to run across this Ethiopian uh, that was coming up to Jerusalem. Uh, uh, for the, way. the angel didn't tell him, go down there and you're going to run across a man of Ethiopia, and I want you to tell him that uh, he need to do this in order to be as unto salvation. He just told him to arise and go down toward Gaza. But then here this man is sitting in the chariot, reading the word of God. But he don't understand what he reads, but when, he, when his angel is done with him, he will. Go ahead, keep reading. His angel going to give it unto Philip, and then Philip... He gave it unto the man. Go ahead. What verse out? Starting 28. Go ahead and read. Was returning and sitting in his chariot uh -huh. and reading Isaiah the prophet. Go ahead. Then. Now the he was returning and he was reading as it is written here, Isaiah the prophet, which is uh, Isaiah the prophet. Go ahead and read on. Then. The Spirit said unto Philip, uh -huh. Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And then, well, first it said an angel. Then it turns around and said, The Spirit said unto Philip, go near and join yourself unto this chariot. So which was it? Was the angel or was it the spirit? One they both been the same. It was the angel that is also a ministering spirit. 
Go ahead, keep reading. And Philip ran thither to him, uh -huh. and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Go ahead, read. Understandest thou what thou readest? And then the uh, uh, Philip said unto the man, Do you understand what you read? Go ahead, read on. And he said, uh -huh. How can I, except some man should guide me? Go ahead, read. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Uh -huh. The place of the scripture which he read was this. Go ahead. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. Uh -huh. And like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so open he not his mouth. Go ahead, me. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Uh -huh. And who shall declare his generation? Go ahead, me. For his life was taken from the earth. Uh -huh. And the eunuch answered, Philip. And said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Uh -huh. Of himself or of some other man? So now then, you know, he asked Philip then, who the prophet talking about? Of himself or is he talking about some other man? He was reading what is written in our Bible as Isaiah chapter 53, where it was referring to when Jesus would come and die for the sins of man. So the man asked uh, uh, Philip, you know, who the prophet talking about? Himself or some other man? And you need to know this. This is a, you need to understand this yes, in order to be as unto salvation. Okay. You need to understand who it is that came and died for you, and then they need to know as well what it is that you need to do in order for his blood to cover you. Go ahead, keep reading. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture. And then Philip opened his mouth and he began reading at the very same scripture. Go ahead, read on. And preached unto him Jesus. And then he preached unto him Jesus. But then it was the angel that told Philip to go down there in the first place. Right. And, 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 and then he ran across this man reading the Bible, not understanding what he read. But then uh, it was given to Philip uh, uh, to uh, explain to this man what it is that he was reading. Go ahead, finish that. And as they went on their way, uh -huh. they came unto a certain water. Go ahead. And the eunuch said, see, here is water. What does and, and then the eunuch said, See, there is water. Because this you got to do to be as a salvation. Somebody got to take you and submerge you in some water, and they got to call over you to name Jesus. And if you don't do that, you ain't got no salvation coming. Because Jesus even said himself, the one that believe and is baptized shall be saved, and the one that believeth not shall be damned. Somebody got to first preach to you the word of God, and then after that, they got to baptize you. And until you've done that, you ain't got no salvation coming. I don't care how much you say you believe or how much you claim that you love the Lord. And after you get through with all that water, then guess what you got to do then? You got to walk in them commandments. That's right. Go ahead. I'll finish that up. End of 36. Go ahead. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Now he said, what does hinder me to be baptized? Well, Philip going to baptize. Man, I didn't explain to you what it is. Uh, that you need to do in order to be as a salvation. Go ahead, keep reading. And Philip said, uh -huh. If thou believest with all thine heart, Go ahead. thou mayest. And he answered and said, He said, Now if you believe with all your heart, thou mayest. Don't, don't, don't make this seem that cut and dry. If, were you paying attention to what it said first? Right. First he preached unto him the word of God. The man, he told him something. He didn't just say, open your mouth and say, I believe. But he, he dealt with the scripture first, and then he turned around and baptized. Absolutely. That is how it goes, people. You know, even Paul in the 16th chapter of Acts, he ran across the jailer, and he asked him, do he believe? But then he first explained to him the scripture, and then he baptized him. Go ahead, finish that verse up, we're going to move on. End of 37. Uh-huh. I believe Go ahead. that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Go ahead, read. And he, and, the, and he commanded the chariot to stand still. Uh -huh. And they went down both into the water. Go ahead. Both Philip and the eunuch. Uh -huh. And he baptized him. And he baptized him. Now, uh, uh, now so you know that the Holy Ghost, uh, 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 which is the Spirit, which is the angel. Because first it said the angel. Then it said the Spirit spake unto him. So the angel and the Spirit is one and the same. That's why Jesus said it is called the Spirit of Truth. Because if you don't notice here, what 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 was he dealing with? He was dealing with nothing but the truth. That is what uh, they were dealing with here, the Word of God. Now, let's go to uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, and we'll pick it up at verse 15. 2 Peter 1, and began reading at uh, uh, verse uh, 15. And I'm going to just show you uh, that this Holy Ghost, it's been around for a while. Even though you don't start to see the word Holy Ghost until you get into the New Testament. 
But that's why I read that definition uh, out of the Bible dictionary that I read uh, to you. Because in the Old Testament, it was just simply called the Holy Spirit or it was called the Spirit. But uh, they are one and the same. Spirit, ghost, uh, uh, one and the same. Uh, ghost is just a, uh, uh, I'll say a slang word for spirit. Let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. And we'll pick it up at uh, verse 15, 2 Peter 1. And began read at verse 15, 1 and 15. Okay, brother, go ahead and read. Moreover, mm -hmm. I will endeavor that ye may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. Go ahead. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables, uh -huh. which we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Now, uh, 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 Peter is saying to the people here, uh, you know, I endeavor that after my, inceit, uh, my deceased, rather. so it's sort of apparent that uh, uh, Peter uh, understood that his time was uh, maybe uh, uh, coming near. And he said, after my deceased, uh, that you always have these things in remembrance unto you. Uh, uh, but we have not followed cunningly devised fables. You know, that's what a lot of people are getting nowadays. They are getting fables. And I'm going to say it right here. You ain't going to get none in here. Amen. I can't say what Peter said about being eyewitnesses unto his majesty. But I can say I'm a witness unto what is written in this Bible. I can say that. Absolutely. So you ain't going to get no cunningly defies fables up in here. But I'm going to tell you right now. A lot of places you go, that is what you are going to get. All you got to do is just read your Bible and then go out and listen to these people. Yep. That is how you determine whether or not somebody is speaking to you by the, word, by the Holy Ghost or, or by the Spirit of Truth or are they speaking by that other spirit. Because it is the Spirit of Truth. If they ain't bringing the truth, then they're not speaking to you by the Holy Ghost. ain't told them nothing. The Holy Ghost told me to tell you. And then none of that stuff that they said that the Holy Ghost told them to tell you can be Proven out by the word of God. So you know it ain't the Holy Ghost right. that's dealing with this person, uh, this person. It is the other spirit that deals with. So again, Peter said, we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made unto, uh, uh, made known unto you uh, uh, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses unto his majesty. Go ahead and read on. 17. Go ahead and read. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. Go ahead. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. Uh -huh. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. This is after the Father had set the Holy Ghost on Jesus. You know, because what did Jesus do? You know, he, he came and, 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 and he got baptized, which uh, John didn't want to baptize him. He told him, you know, uh, you should be baptizing me instead of me baptizing you. Jesus has suffered to be so for thus and us shall all righteousness be fulfilled. And then John baptized him and the Holy Ghost came up on him. And guess what the book said? If you want to get the Holy Ghost, you know what it said, what Peter said to them Jews? He said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, Jesus, he got... That was, that was a pattern of how things should be. Jesus, he didn't need to repent because he hadn't done no wrong to repent of. But he did get baptized, and when he got baptized, the Holy Ghost came upon yes, him. Sir. Go ahead, keep reading. 18. Go ahead and read. And this voice which came from heaven we heard mm -hmm. when we were with him in the holy mount. Go ahead. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Now he said we heard this voice, but in case you doubt us, that, you know, God told you we ain't dealing with no cunningly devised fables. But in case you doubt, then we have a more sure word of prophecy. Go ahead and read on, brother. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. Uh-huh. He said, whereunto you, you do well that you take heed unto this. This and I am about to tell you about it because it's like a light shining into a dark place. When you read this, when, when you read this word of God with some understanding... It brings everything to the light. Yes, sir. So. And until you do, you ain't got no light in you. And the Lord even had it written about a, a, a mouth of Isaiah. If they do not speak unto, according to the law and to the testimony, which is the Old Testament and the New Testament, it is because there is no light in them. 
So now, you do well that you take heed, because it's like a light shining into a dark place. And until, uh, 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 until you take heed, you're just walking around in darkness. That's what you're doing. I don't care, I, I, I don't care how much you claim uh, 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 that you're walking in the light and that you know the Lord. Go ahead, keep reading. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place Go ahead. until the day dawn and the day stars arise in your hearts. Go ahead, me. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. See what he said? No prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. In other words, man didn't just sit down and write what he wanted to write. People tell you all the time, uh, man wrote the Bible and said, yeah, you are so right, brother. He really did. Guess what? He didn't write what he wanted to write, though. He wrote what he was inspired to write, as Paul said when he wrote the letter unto Timothy, that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God, and it is good for doctrine and for instruction in righteousness. Yes, sir. So it was not of any private interpretation. He wrote what he was told to write. Ain't no way no man's little brain can come up with nothing like this. No, sir. I don't care how many degrees he say he got. He called himself Reverend Doctor, 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 and Doctor Samo. But nevertheless, his little brain cannot come up with this. No, sir. Nothing this precise. Hallelujah. Far reaching. Thousands of years in advance. He told you about stuff that's yet to come to pass or just maybe recently came to pass all the way back in Genesis. We're talking about almost 6,000 years. Yes, sir. So now it was not of any private interpretation. But he's going to tell you how they got it. Go ahead, continue reading. 21. Go ahead. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men. It didn't come by the will of men. Go ahead and read on. But holy men of God spake uh -huh. as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. In other words, the angel came to them and told them what to write. We're going to read uh, some examples of them. So they just sit down. Well, let me see. I think I'll write this down. No. Uh -uh. The angel gave it to them what it is that they should write. Let's start. That's what this Holy Ghost is. Let's go over to, uh, let's go over to uh, Acts chapter uh, uh, 7. And we're going to pick it up at uh, 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 verse 35. Acts chapter 7. And we'll begin reading at verse uh, 35 here. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to start out... Uh, Letting you know uh, that uh, uh, Moses, uh, 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 he was with the church that was in the wilderness, which, uh, uh, which was Israel. And that's, by the way, that is when the church got started. It didn't start in Acts chapter 2 when the uh, Holy Ghost came and lit up on them people uh, like fiery tongues. That's what everybody tell you. That's when it got started. But the church, it was in existence Long before then, start reading at verse 35. Go ahead and read on. Acts 7 and 35. Yes. This Moses, uh -huh. whom they refused, saying, uh -huh. Who made thee a ruler and a judge? Go ahead. The same did God sin to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. Now, he said, uh, uh, they asked Moses, you know, who made you a ruler and a judge? That's what he's uh, referring to. Uh, you know, when you go back in Exodus, you'll read it. Uh, he said, uh, and, and it's that Moses that said, uh, uh, who made, uh, what the people said, who made you a ruler and a judge? Uh, this is that same one that God sent to be a ruler and to judge and to deliver the people by the hand of the angel. Because the Lord always dealt by the hand of the angel. You know, he didn't come down, uh, he don't come down and, and do this thing first. That's what angels are for. They, they're ministering spirits. That's what they do. They're serving spirits. He tells them what to do, and that is what they do. Go ahead, keep reading. He brought them out. After that, he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt. Now, he brought Israel out after he had shown the signs and the wonders in the land of Egypt. Go ahead, meet them. And in the Red Sea. Uh-huh. And in the wilderness, 40 years. And in the Red Sea, even splitting the Red Sea. And then he showed all these signs and wonders uh, in the wilderness for 40 years, bringing water out of the rock and all of that stuff and raining food down from heaven 
uh, that they that uh, that they might eat. Go ahead, T. Reed. This is that Moses. Uh, he said, "This is that Moses." Go ahead, read on. Which said unto the children of Israel, uh-huh. "A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you." Well, we read it. Go ahead, read on. Of your brethren, like unto me, uh-huh. him shall ye hear. Go ahead, read. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. This is that Moses that was with the church. That was in the wilderness. Who was he with there? He was with Israel. Go ahead and read on. With the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. Now he said with the angel that spake unto him in the Mount Sinai. It was the angel that spoke. But the angel spoke on the behalf of God. When this angel spoke, it was just as God was standing there speaking himself. Mm-hmm. With the angel. And we're going to go back and read it in the, uh, in the Old Testament. In case you got a problem with the New Testament. But he said here with the angel that spoke unto him from the burning bush. Go ahead and read on. And with our fathers Uh who received the lively oracles to give unto us. And with our fathers that received God's divine revelations to give unto us. Let's go now to, uh, let's go look at this. Let's go now to, uh. Exodus chapter 3, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. Exodus 3, and we'll begin reading at verse 1, and we are going to go back and look at this. Because this angel, it is the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit, or the Spirit, as it is called uh, in, uh, in the uh, Old Testament. Because the book said that the, uh, 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 that the, uh, that the prophets, they spake by the Holy Ghost. Well, who was it? that gave them the message to give unto the people. It was the angels that gave them the message to give unto the people. And we're going to look at a few examples of it. Let's go now to uh, Exodus 3 and begin reading at verse 1. Go ahead and read. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his Uh father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock into the backsides of the desert. Go ahead. And came to the mouth of God, even Horeb. Uh-huh. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. Now notice what it said. Now, I told you it's written in the, in the Old Testament too. I, I did tell you that. Didn't I? Yes, sir. And now you read it for yourself. So I didn't, I, I, I didn't, there wasn't no kind of devised papers when I told you that. No. So now he said, and with the angel of the Lord that appeared unto him in a flame of fire, out of the midst of the bush. Go ahead and read on. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Go ahead and read. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, uh-huh. why the bush is not burnt. Go ahead and read. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, uh-huh. God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, uh-huh. Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. Well, it said God called unto him, but it said an angel. That spoke unto him. But if when, when this angel spoke, it was just as if God himself was speaking. And another thing, I don't know if you noticed, the Lord can have some burn without it burning up. Yes, right. sir. But those that got a problem with the lake of fire. Mm. Well, how, how you going to burn? Well, you got people teach again. Well, how you going to burn? How you going to burn some? And, and, it, and it don't burn up. Well, how did the bush burn and it didn't burn up? Okay. Teach. Go ahead, keep reading. Five. Read. And he said, uh-huh. Draw not nigh hither. Go ahead. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. Mm-hmm. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Go ahead, read. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, uh-huh. the God of Abraham, Go ahead. the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he said, I'm the God of your fathers, I'm the God of Abraham, and I'm the God of Isaac, and I'm the God of Jacob. Go ahead, keep reading. And Moses hid his face, uh-huh. for he was afraid to look upon God. Go ahead. And the Lord said, uh-huh. I have surely seen the affliction of my people, Go ahead. which are in Egypt, uh-huh. and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. Go ahead. For I know their sorrows, uh-huh. and them come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, Go ahead. and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land, uh-huh. and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, Go unto ahead. the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. So now he said, I have come down that I may deliver them out of the hand uh, of the Egyptians. Into a good land. Let's go over to uh, Judges chapter 2. 
and we'll pick it up at verse 1 because the Lord operates by the hand of the angel. And when he sent that angel, and that angel stand before you and said, Thus said the Lord, then it is if God himself is speaking unto you. Start reading here at Judges chapter 2. And we'll pick it up at verse 1. Judges 2. And we want to begin reading at verse 1. 2 and 1. Go ahead and read. 2 and 1. Go ahead. And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal. Now he said again, the angel of the Lord, it came up from Gilgal. Go ahead and read on. To bore him uh -huh. and said, uh -huh. I made you to go up out of Egypt. Look what the angel said. I made you to go up out of Egypt. It was the Lord that did it, but he did it by the hand of the angel. This is that Holy Ghost that the book is telling you about. That is a ministering spirit that always sent that a minister. We're going to find something else out in a little bit when we read another scripture. We're going to find out that the Lord said his name is in that angel. That angel came in his name, in other words. In, that, in other words, that angel came with the message yeah. that came from God. Go ahead. Keep reading. What verse out? It's middle of two. Middle of one. Go ahead. And have brought you and have brought you into the land which I swear unto your fathers. Go ahead, me. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. Uh -huh. And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Well, you know, it sounds as if this angel is speaking in the first person. And I said I did this. And 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 and, and ye shall make no league uh, with the inhabitants of the nations. Go ahead, continue to read. Ye shall throw down their altars. Go ahead. But ye shall not, but the but ye have not obeyed my voice. Go ahead, read. Why have ye done this? Uh -huh. Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, uh -huh. but they shall be as thorns in your side, Go ahead. and their gods shall be a snare unto you. Go ahead, and read. And it came to pass when the angel of the Lord spake these words. And it came to pass when the angel itself of the Lord spake these words. But the angel was speaking on God's behalf, and he was almost like speaking in the first person. He said, I brought you up out of, uh, of the land of Egypt. The Lord did it, but he did it by the hand of an angel. That's what they are, medicine spirits. Go ahead, finish that verse up, and we'll move on. Go ahead, me. And it came to pass when the angel of the Lord spake these words uh -huh. unto the children of Israel, go ahead. that the people lifted up their voices and wept. Now, let's go over to uh, Exodus chapter 23. And we'll pick it up at verse 20. It's that Holy Ghost people that have been around, been around from the very start uh, that we read uh, in, 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 first, uh, in Second Peter, rather, where it said that the, that the prophet spake by the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost or the angel is the one that gave them the words to speak. Let's start reading here now at Exodus chapter 23. And we we'll began reading at verse 20. Exodus 23. And began read at verse 20. 23 and 20. Okay, go ahead and read, brother. Behold, I send an angel before thee mm -hmm. to keep thee in the way. See what the Lord said. You know, this is when Israel was in the wilderness. He said, now I send an angel before you to keep you in the way. You know, this, this might be a, 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 a little preview of how the Lord going to do this thing uh, when, when he take the people back to the wilderness. Because mm -hmm. the Lord said he pretty much going to do the thing. Uh, uh, in the future like he did it in the past. Right. So now he said, I sent an angel before you, and this angel, he's going to keep you in the way, but you better obey his voice. You better keep this kind of stuff in mind because, uh, you know, the Lord talk about them that's going to rebel against him in the wilderness. And he said, I'm not going to pardon your transgression. Go ahead. When, when that angel tells you to do something, you better hop to it, buddy. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. And uh -huh. to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. See what he said? I sent an angel before thee uh, to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place that I have prepared. Because the Lord had the angel to lead them by the hand of Moses into the place that they had, uh, he had prepared. Go ahead and read on. Beware of him uh -huh. and obey his voice. See what he said? Beware of him and obey his voice. Whatever you do. You better, if that angel says something, you better do it. He said, beware of him and obey his voice. Go ahead, continue to read. Provoke him not. And do not provoke him. However, Israel did provoke that angel in the wilderness. That angel hurt him too. Go ahead, read on. For he will not pardon your transgression. You know what he said? For he will not pardon your transgression. Go ahead, read on. For my name is in him. See what the Lord said. My name is in this angel. In other words, when this angel speaks, it's just like I'm speaking. 
He said, for my name is in him. You know, Jesus even said that he was going to send the Holy Ghost in what name? In his name. Didn't he say that? That's what he said. Because the message that the Holy Ghost or the angel came with is the message that he got from Jesus that Jesus got from the Father, people. That is the protocol. That is how it is done. It was done that way in the past. It was done that way in the New Testament. And it will be done that way in the future. Let's go now to, uh, let's go now to Nehemiah. The book of Nehemiah. And we'll begin reading at chapter 9. And uh, we'll pick it up at verse uh, 16. Nehemiah chapter 9. And we began reading at verse 16. And I'm going to show you uh, what that angel was called uh, that brought them out. Uh, Nehemiah 9 and 16. Okay, go ahead and read if you have. But they and our fathers dealt proudly mm -hmm. and hardened their necks and hearkened not to thy commandments. See what it said? You know, and he's, he's taking you back to uh, uh, when, uh, uh, when Israel... Uh, was uh, delivered out of Egypt. He said, but they and our fathers, they hardened their neck and, and, and dealt proudly. Go ahead and read on. And refused to obey. And they refused. Oh, well, Lord, I told them you better obey this uh, angel, didn't he? Because he ain't going to pardon your transgression. Well, Israel did not obey. Maybe that's why many of them or most of them got cut off right there in the wilderness. Go ahead, keep reading. Neither were mindful of thy wonders uh -huh. that thou didst among them. Go ahead and read. But hardened their necks, uh -huh. and, their, and in their rebellion appointed a captain to return to their bondage. Go, and then they rebelled to the point that they appointed them a captain to go back in the bondage. Lord then delivered them out of bondage by Moses and by the hand of the angel. But they appointed them a captain to go back in the bondage. You know, we need to go back uh, to Egypt where we had the flesh pots. You're going back in the bondage just so you can get something to eat, man. Come on. Wow. When the Lord is raining bread to you out of heaven yes. and, and bringing water up out the rock, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. And then you keep begging. He just dumped so many quails on you on, 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 until, you, until you had it coming out your ears and your nose. Mm -hmm. But you're going to appoint a captain that you won't make go back. That's 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 to the extent that Israel rebelled. Go ahead, finish. The, uh, finish keep reading. But thou art a God ready to pardon, uh -huh. gracious and merciful, slow to anger, uh -huh. and of great kindness, and forsook them not. And and then he is all that God slow in mercy, slow to anger, pardon the sin. They just, just wouldn't stop. You understand what I'm? Keep pardoning the sin. They do go right back and do it again. A few minutes later, they back at it. Go ahead and read. 18. Go ahead. Yeah. When they had made them a molten calf and said, uh -huh. This is thy God that so, brought thee up out of Egypt. A calf that you just made from some earring that you had in your ears a few minutes ago. <laughs> that you gave to Aaron and told him to throw it in the fire. And an and, and image came up and you said, and said, well, these be the gods that brought us out of Egypt. Well, a few minutes ago, they was in rain. So now, how, they, how is they the God that brought you out of Egypt? Go ahead, keep reading. And had wrought great provocation. Go ahead and see what he said. And you have worked great provocation. Now they provoked him. And he said, don't provoke that angel. Go ahead, keep reading. I'm going to show you what that angel was called. Go ahead and read on. Yet thou in thy manifold mercies uh -huh. forsook them not in the wilderness. Go ahead. The pillar of the cloud departed not from them by day uh -huh. to lead them in the way. Go ahead. Neither the pillar of fire by night to show them light. Go ahead. And the way wherein they should go. Go ahead. Thou gavest also thy good spirit to instruct them. Wait a minute. Look what he gave. But he said, I'm going to give the angel to instruct you. Didn't the book say that? Yes. But now what is that angel? He is the good spirit. He, and we're going to find out from Isaiah he was even called the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit been around, people. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. You want to call Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, one and the same. But he said, I gave them their good spirit to instruct them. What verse up? Middle of 20. Go ahead and read. And withheld is not thy manner from their mouth. Now he's saying, I did not withhold, uh, 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 withhold manner from thy mouth. You finish that? In ending of 20. Go ahead. And gave us them water for their thirst. Now, let's go over to uh, let's go over to Isaiah chapter 63, and we'll pick it up at verse 9. So that angel that he gave to instruct him, we see here Nehemiah, he's called that good spirit, because that is what uh, the angel is. He is a uh, ministering spirit. 
Now he's going to even be referred to here as the Holy Spirit. Isaiah chapter uh, 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 63, and we'll begin reading at uh, verse 9. Isaiah 63 and uh, verse 9. 63 and 9, because it's even going to refer to him as the uh, uh, angel of God's presence. And I'm going to show you who the angel of God's presence is. Let's start reading at 63. And pick it up at uh, uh, 63 and verse 9. Go ahead and read. In all their affliction, mm -hmm. he was afflicted. Go ahead. And the angel of his presence saved them. He it, said in all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of God's presence, he saved them. Go ahead and read on. In his love and right. in his pity, he redeemed them. Go ahead. And he bare them and carried them all the days of old. And he bare them and he carried them even all of the days of old. Go ahead, read on. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. But they rebelled, and look what it's called here. They rebelled and they vexed his Holy Spirit. Well, he could have said the Holy Angel. He could have said the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Or he could have just said the Spirit. But he said they rebelled and they vexed his Holy Spirit. The Lord said, don't do that. Because he ain't going to pardon your transgression. Go ahead, keep reading. What verse up? Middle of 10. Go ahead and read. Therefore he was turned to be their enemy, and he fought against them. Therefore he turned to be their enemy, and he fought away. The Lord said he ain't going to do that, didn't he? Yes. He said, don't provoke him. Uh, uh, provoke him not, for he will not pardon thy transgression. He will become an enemy unto you. I don't think we read that part, but he would become an enemy unto you, and that is exactly what he did. He became an enemy unto him. Go ahead, keep reading. What verse up? Starting 11. Go ahead. And he remembered the days of old. Uh -huh. Moses and his people saying. Go ahead. Where is he that brought them up out of the sea? Uh -huh. With the shepherd of his flock. Go ahead. Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit? In other words, his Holy Spirit among them. Because the angel, Lord said he's going to be there among you. Right. Lord said even forever he would be there among yes. you. Yes. So when he said put his Holy Spirit within them. He's talking about his Holy Spirit or that holy angel that was among them there that the Lord set there to instruct them. But they refused to hear the instructions. Go ahead, keep reading. That led them by the right hand of Moses with his glorious arm. See what it said, that led them by the right hand of Moses. The angel did it by the hand of Moses even with his glorious arm. Go ahead, keep reading. Dividing the water before them uh -huh. to make himself an everlasting name. Dividing the water before them to make itself an everlasting name. So now this angel, he's been called now the Holy Spirit. And he was called uh, uh, the, uh, the good spirit. Because that is what he is and the spirit that brings unto you the truth. And that is what that angel did. Uh, let's go now to... Uh, Let's go now to, uh, let's go now to uh, uh, Daniel chapter 8. And we'll begin reading at verse 15. Daniel 8. And we'll pick it up at uh, verse 15. 8 and 15. To show you uh, a, a, a couple of examples here. Of how the Lord used the angel to, uh, to uh, uh, deliver the message. Uh, 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 Daniel wanted to know. Uh, uh, some things here. Start reading at 8 and pick it up at uh, verse 15. 8 and 15. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass mm -hmm. when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision Go ahead. and sought for the meaning. Uh -huh. Then behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. Now Daniel said he had seen the vision and then he sought for the meaning of it and there stood before him as the appearance of a man. This this man here that we are looking at, uh, he's even an angel. Uh, uh, even Gabriel. Go ahead and read on. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Ulai, uh -huh. which called and said, Go ahead. Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. See what, see what it said to him? Gabriel, make this. Gabriel is an angel, by the way, in case you didn't know. Make this man to understand the the vision. Go ahead and read on. So he came near where I stood. Uh -huh. And when he came, I was afraid and fell on my face. But he said unto me, uh -huh. Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Now he said at the time of the end. So this vision, it was sometime, was dealing with some that was yet to come, even at the time of the end.
But notice what Daniel said when he saw this angel that he was afraid and he fell on his face. You know, people always talk about, well, you know, I see the angel. And, mm -hmm. and, yeah, like you, uh -huh. you see one, depending on how he show up, you might be afraid too and fall on your face. Go Absolutely. ahead, keep reading. Pen, you know, the pen, if he show up in his full and glorified body, I promise you, you're going to be afraid yeah. and you're going to fall on your face too. Go ahead, keep reading. Now, uh -huh. as he was speaking with me, Go ahead. I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground. Go ahead. But he touched me and set me upright. Go ahead, me. And he said, Behold, uh -huh. I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. But he said, I fell on my face, but he touched me and raised me up and said, Behold, I will make you to know what shall be at the last end. Go ahead, continue reading. For the time appointed, the end shall be. Well, we ain't dealing with what it was that he was going to make him know. But I was just showing you the method by which God used in order to make him know. He sent the angel to tell him what it is that he needed to know. Let's go to Daniel chapter 9 and look at it again. Let's go to 9 and pick it up at verse 20. Go ahead and read. And whilst I was speaking and praying mm -hmm. and confessing my sin, and the sin of my people Israel. Go ahead. And presenting my supplication before the Lord my God uh -huh. for the holy mountain of my God. Go ahead. Yeah. While I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, uh -huh. whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. Go ahead, me. And he informed me and talked with me and said. Daniel say he informed me. And he talked with me. You know, people got a problem with the Old Testament. Well, well, look at how Daniel got the message. He really got the message from the angel that God had sent. You understand what I'm saying? Sure. The, in the New Testament, you know, they, you, you, you start to read for the most part. You know, they read and they studied and they understood what the prophets wrote. But then when the prophets, much of what the prophets got, they got it directly from the angel that God sent unto him. And as Daniel said here, the, the angel informed me and he talked with me. Go ahead and read on. Oh, Daniel. Uh-huh. I know. Oh, Daniel. I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. He said, I am now come forth to give thee skill and to give thee understanding. Go ahead and read that next verse. Then we'll move on. Go ahead. At the beginning of thy supplication, uh -huh. the commandment came forth. Go ahead. And I am come to show thee. For thou art greatly beloved. He said, I've come to show you, for you are, gr uh, you are great. I've come to show you these things, Daniel. You know, this, these things regarding this vision that you have seen. Our Lord then sent the angel Gabriel to show Daniel these things. Let's go over to Luke chapter 1. And we'll pick it up at uh, verse 11. Luke chapter 1. And we'll begin reading at... Uh, Verse 11. Now, the Lord is going to uh, send the angel unto uh, Zechariah, John's father, to help him to understand, uh, to understand some things. Start reading at uh, Luke chapter 1, and we'll pick it up at... Uh, Uh, verse 11, Luke 1, and we began reading at uh, verse 11. Go ahead and read. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord uh -huh. standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Go ahead and read. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. He said he was troubled. Why, why does people get scared when they see the angel? Man? <laughs> well, you know, you don't talk with one, it ain't even bother you. you know, just like you talking to me or somebody. Yeah, Brother Daniel, yeah, uh -huh, what up? But uh, he said now he saw him and then fear uh, 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 fell upon him. Because he's going to tell John, you know, your wife, uh, even in her old age, she's going to have a son. But now, uh, 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 I'll skip down because we ain't concerned with that. But I'm just showing you the method uh, by which the Lord used. Skip down to, uh, uh, skip down to uh, verse 18. Go ahead and read. And Zacharias said unto the angel. And Zacharias spoke unto the angel. Go ahead and read on. Whereby shall I know this? Now he said, how will I know this, that my wife, even in her old age, 
Uh, that she's going to uh, have a child. Go ahead and read. For I am an old man, uh -huh. and my wife well stricken in years. Go ahead and read. And the angel answering said unto him, uh -huh. I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God. He said, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God. Well, we read over in Isaiah that the Holy Spirit, of which is also the Holy Ghost, he said, I, that stands in the presence of God. You know, this, most of the time when you see angels delivering messages, mm -hmm. if it give you a name, it's always Gabriel. You know, talk book talk about uh, Michael the archangel, but, but he was the one that did all the fighting. Okay. When the Lord got ready to deal with uh, uh, Satan, he didn't send Gabriel. He sent Michael. Go, go throw him out. All right. All right. Throw him and all his angels out. So Michael and his angels threw uh, 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 Satan and his angels out. Then when the Lord was trying to get a message to Daniel by Gabriel, Gabriel said that, that uh, the, the prince of Tyrus, which was the angel, held them up for 21 days, but he sent Michael that he might let him through. So Michael, he is the warrior. Ain't nothing yeah, play. Yeah. <laughs> but Gabriel, he is the messenger. Because he always bring the message. We saw where he was bringing the messenger. He was bringing the message in, in the book of Daniel. And now we see where he's bringing the message uh, here in Luke. What verse out? Middle of ending 19. Go ahead and finish it. And then the, we'll, we'll skip. Go ahead. And I am sent to speak unto thee. See what and, he's saying? And I am sent uh, uh, to speak unto you, uh, 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 Zachariah. Skip down to... Uh, Skip down now to uh, 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 verse 26. Go ahead and read. And in the sixth month, uh -huh. the angel Gabriel was sent from God into the city of Galilee. Now in the sixth month, the angel of God uh, uh, was sent uh, unto Galilee. Go ahead and read. Named Nazareth. Go ahead and read on. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph. To a virgin that was engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, Mary in other words. Go ahead and read. Of the house of David. Uh-huh. And the virgin's name was Mary. So again, now the Lord then sent the angel Gabriel unto Mary to tell her what is going on. But now, I'm just showing you a couple of examples of how the Lord did, went about getting this message unto the people. He did it by the hand of an angel. And, the book, and Jesus told you that that was the duties of the Holy Ghost was to deliver the message and even the message unto those that would be asked unto salvation. Let's go now to uh let's go now to uh John chapter uh six and we'll pick it up at uh verse forty eight John six and we'll begin reading at verse forty eight. So now we got the messenger and as the title of the lesson said, the Holy Ghost, the messenger, and the message. Because he go, if he a messenger, he got to have a message, don't he? Yes, if he ain't got no message, then he ain't no messenger. Yes, so now, what message he going to come with? He going to come with the message of the Word of God. Let's start reading here at 6 and pick it up at uh, verse 48. And I'm going to show you what that word is called here, too. Because the book talks about being filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, the angel ain't finna get in. Okay. But the message that he will bring, that is the message that will get in you. And that is the message that you will be filled with. And we are going to show you that. Start reading at 6 and pick it up at verse 48. Go ahead and read. I am that bread of life. Mm -hmm. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. So now Jesus said, I'm that bread of life. Your fathers they ate manna in the wilderness and they died. Go ahead and read on. This is the bread uh -huh. which cometh down from heaven. Go ahead. That a man may eat thereof and not die. Now I'm the bread that came down from heaven. Eat of this bread, you're not going to die. Whatever this bread is, you need to eat of it because you'll live forever if you eat of it. Go ahead and read on. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. Now he said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Go ahead and read on. If any man eat of this bread, uh -huh. he shall live forever. Now he said, if you eat of this bread, you will live forever. He's going to tell you what this bread is. I'm sure you probably already know, but we're going to read it anyway. Go ahead and read on. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, uh -huh. which I will give for the life of the world. Now he said, the bread that I will give it is my flesh, and I will give it for the life of the world. 
people not understanding what he is talking about here, and they're trying to figure out how this man going to give us his flesh to eat. Go ahead and read on. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, uh -huh. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Now, that is not what he was telling them uh, that they needed to eat. But now, skip down to uh, 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 verse uh, uh, 63, because he's going to tell them that the flesh profited nothing. Go ahead and read on. It is the spirit that quickeneth. It is the spirit that giveth life. Go ahead and read on. The flesh profiteth nothing. The flesh profiteth nothing. Now, he's going to tell you what that spirit is. That will give you life. Go ahead and read on. The words that I speak unto you, uh -huh. they are spirit, and they are life. That is the spirit. Not only, you know, he the, the angel brings the message, but what message do he bring? He brings the word of God, and that word, that is spirit, and that is what will give you life. And if you eat of that word, you will live forever. If you eat it, and if you obey it, then you will live forever. So now you have the angel. That is the spirit. And you have the word, which is the spirit as well. Let's start. Uh, let's go now to uh, let's go now uh, to uh, John chapter 17. And we'll pick it up at uh, verse 14. John 17. And we'll begin reading at verse 14. 17 and 14. You need this, this, this Holy Spirit. You know, people talk about the spirit going to save you. Well, it will save you. If you really understand what it is, and if you know what you need to do uh, uh, to go about to get this spirit, uh, it will save you. Because the spirit that you are going to get, it is the word of God, and that word will get you everlasting life, people. Hallelujah. Let's start reading here at John chapter 17, and we'll pick it up at verse 14. Now the word that the Father gave unto Jesus that Jesus gave unto uh, his disciples. Go ahead, verse 14. Go ahead and read. I have given them thy word, uh -huh. and the world hath hated them. And Jesus said, I gave, you know, talking about those that was with him at that time. He said, I have given them uh, your word, Father, and the world have hated them. Yes. And when you get it, they ain't going to care too much for you either, buddy. Right. I guarantee you that. Yep. You was cool until you got that word. Now you ain't so cool no more. <laughs> Unless you just sit there like a, 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 stump, a, 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 a stump on a log and keep your mouth shut, then you're all right. But if you open your mouth and start speaking that word, I promise you, they ain't going to care too much for you either. Uh, he said, now I've given them the word, Father, that you gave unto me, and the world have hated them. Go ahead and read on. Because they are not of the world. Now he said, he's talking about the word of, that the Father gave unto him, that he gave unto them. And now I'm going to show you what truth is. Because remember the spirit, it is called the spirit of truth. Verse 17, go ahead and read. Sanctify them through thy truth. See what he says when he prayed to the Father, Father, sanctify them. Or set them apart through thy truth. Go ahead and read on. Thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. So when they come to you and they ain't bringing the word of God, you know it ain't coming from the Holy Ghost people. Because that's what truth is. Truth is the word of God, and when the Lord sent the angel, that is what he sent him with. He sent him with the word of truth. Let's go now to, uh, let's go now to uh, Proverbs uh, 1, and we'll pick it up at uh, verse 23, Proverbs 1, and we'll begin reading at verse 23 here. And I just want to show you that the spirit and the word really they are one and the same. Proverbs uh uh, 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 one and pick it up at verse 23. One and 23. We're going to read just uh, this one verse. One and 23. Go ahead and read. Turn you at my reproof. Now he said, Turn you at my reproof. Go ahead and read on. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. Now and he said, I will pour out my spirit, he said unto you. Go ahead and read on. I will make known my words unto you. And I will make known my words unto you. Because when he put that spirit up on you, then he's going to make known his words unto you. You know, either you're going to get this word or you're going to do something uh, 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 that pertain to the word. You know, like uh, cause the book talk about uh, the different gifts of the spirit. And, uh, uh, and it talks about, you know, the gift like uh, healing and, uh, and speaking in tongues and all of that. But it all have to do with the word of God, people. Let's go now. To, uh, let's go now to 
uh, 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 2 Samuel chapter 23, and we'll pick it up at, uh, at verse 1. 2 Samuel 23, and began reading at uh, verse 1 here. 23 and 1. Because I want to show you uh, 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 what uh, 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 David said. He start reading at 23 and 1. Go ahead and read. Now these be the last words of David. Uh -huh. David the son of Jesse said, uh -huh. and the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of, God, of, of the God of Jacob, uh -huh. and the sweet psalmist of Israel said. Now he said, uh, 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 the last words of David, David the son of Jesse, uh, and, and uh, the man who was raised up on high, of the anointed of God of Jacob, and sweet psalmist of Israel Said, you know, you read in the in the scripture sometimes, even in the New Testament, where it talks about the uh, Holy Ghost spake by the mouth of David. Start reading that verse two now. Go ahead and read. The Spirit of the Lord spake by me. See what David said. The Spirit of the Lord spake by me. Go ahead and read on. And His word was in my tongue. And His words was in my tongue. Because when the Lord give you that Spirit, that is what He's really giving you. He's given unto you. His word, that's why David said, the spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his words was in my tongue. Because that is the spirit that you are going to get, people. You are going to get his word. Yes. And when you get that word, then you are supposed to speak that word. Because oftentimes, when men was given that word, we don't have time to deal with all this stuff. But when men was given that word, they prophesied the word of God. That is what they prophesied. We're going to read one. Uh, well, maybe a couple of examples. Okay. Let's go now to uh, Ezekiel chapter 2. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 2. And we'll begin reading at, uh, at verse 1. And I'm going to show you uh, 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 what Ezekiel said about the Spirit entering into him. And, uh, and I'm going to show you uh, 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 what he did when that Spirit entered into him. And show you what it was that really entered into him. Because the angel, it ain't going to get in you. But the word is going to get in you. If you do what it is that you are supposed to do. Now, uh, 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 start reading at Ezekiel 2. And pick it up at verse 1. 2 and 1. Okay, brother, go ahead and read. And he said unto me, go ahead. Son of man, uh -huh. stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. Now, uh, Ezekiel said, a voice said unto him, Son of man, stand up on your feet. And I'm going to speak unto you. Go ahead and read on. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me. Wait a minute. He said, the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me. You know what entered into Ezekiel when he spake unto him? The Word of God. That's what entered into him. Then it says, Son of man, stand up on your, on your feet and I'll speak unto you. And Ezekiel said when... Uh, he uh, stood up on his feet, and the Spirit entered into him. Go ahead and read on. And set me upon my feet. Go ahead and read. That I heard him that spake unto me. And Ezekiel said, and I heard him of that spake unto me. Skip down to uh, verse 8. Go ahead and read. But thou, son of man, uh -huh. hear what I say unto thee. Go ahead. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Uh -huh. Open thy mouth, and eat that I give thee. See, he said what he said. Open your mouth, and eat that what he give you. And you know what he's giving him? He's giving him the word of God. He's telling him to open his mouth and eat it. But this you don't eat with your mouth. You eat it with your mind. That is what you eat it with. You eat it with your ear. So now, he said now, uh, 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 open your mouth and eat that that I give unto you. Go ahead, read on. And when I looked, uh -huh. behold, and hand was sent unto me. Go ahead. And lo, a roll of a book was writ was therein. And he spread it before me. Now he said his hand came before him. And, uh, and, 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 and in his hand was a roll of a book. And he spread it before me. Go ahead and read on. And he spread it before me. Uh -huh. And it was written within and without. Go ahead. And there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. Now go on into chapter 3 and pick it up at verse 1. 3 and 1. Go ahead and read. Moreover, he said unto me, uh -huh. Son of man, go ahead. eat that thou findest. Uh -huh. Eat this roll, and go speak 
unto the children of Israel. Well, wait a minute. He said, eat the road. Now you can go speak to somebody because now you have been given something. But this, it was this angel that had this book in his hand that told Ezekiel to eat it and then after you eat it now, go and speak unto the people because you have been given a message now. The messenger have given him the message and what was the message? The message was the word of God and now go and speak unto the people, he says. Go ahead and read on. So I opened my mouth. Go ahead. And he caused me to eat that roll. Yeah, he said, I opened my mouth, and he, and he caused me to eat that roll. Go ahead. You know, I ain't talking about eating no, eat, literally eating something with your mouth. You know that. Okay. You can eat all the books you want. You can get a stack of books this high and eat every one of them. But if you have not read them and understood them, then you, can, you don't have nothing to say. Because you ain't learned nothing. Before the Lord sent a man out, he first make him eat the road. And then he tell him, go and speak unto the people. Go ahead, keep reading. And he said unto me, go ahead. son of man, uh -huh. cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll. Wait a minute, he said, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with with this rope. That's what you're full of. What is Ezekiel full of? He's full of the word of God. That is what he's full of. He said, uh, 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 Son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this robe. Go ahead and read on. That I give thee. Uh huh. Then did I eat it. Go ahead. And it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Now, let's go over to, uh, cause John, well, we're going to get to John in a minute. But first, let's go uh, to uh, Numbers. Chapter, uh, Go to Numbers chapter 11. And we'll pick it up at verse 10. We go to John after this. Numbers uh, 11. And we'll pick it up at uh, verse 10. And I'm going to show you uh, when, the, uh, when the Lord poured out his uh, Holy Spirit up on some people. Show you what they did. Uh, uh, John, uh, I don't mean John, but uh, Numbers 11. And we'll pick it up at... Uh, uh, pick it up at verse 10. Numbers 11. And we began reading at verse 10. 11 and 10. Okay, go ahead and read, brother. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families. Mm -hmm. Every man in the door of his, sin, of his tent. Go ahead. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. Go ahead. And Moses said unto the Lord, mm -hmm. Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? Go ahead. And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight? Uh -huh. That thou layest the burden of all this people upon me. So now, you know, and Moses, he sort of complained a little bit to the Lord that, uh, you know, all these people, I didn't bear all these people. Huh? <laughs> you know, I need some help with all of this. Go ahead and read on. Have I conceived this people? Go ahead. Have I begotten them? Uh -huh. That thou shouldest say unto me, carry them in thy bosom. As a nursing father beareth the sucking child uh -huh. unto the land which thou swearest unto their fathers. Go ahead, me. When should I have flesh to give unto all this people? Uh -huh. For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. Go ahead. I'm not able to bear all this people alone. Uh -huh. Go ahead, me. Because it is too heavy for me. Uh -huh. And if thou deal thus with me, kill me. I pray thee, out of this hand, if I have found favor in thy sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. So now, you, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, Moses got a little bit weird with Israel, because Israel wear you out. Go ahead and read on. And the Lord said unto Moses, uh -huh. Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel. Now he said, the Lord said unto Moses, Gather seventy men of the elders of Israel. Go ahead and read on. Thou knowest to be the elders of the people uh -huh. and officers over them. Go ahead. And bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation uh -huh. that they may stand there with thee. Go ahead and read. And I will come down and talk with thee. Uh -huh. And I will take of the spirit which is upon thee. And I will put it upon them. Now he said, I'm going to take of the spirit, uh, Moses, that is up on you and I'm going to put it upon them. And the spirit that, that was up on Moses that the Lord was going to take and put up on them. It was, uh, it was just the spirit of God. That's all that it was. Go ahead, keep reading. And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, uh -huh. that thou bear it not thyself alone. Now, skip down to uh, skip down to uh, 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 verse uh, 24. So the Lord did that. He took the spirit that was upon Moses and put it up on these men. And the spirit was none other 
than the Spirit of God. Skip down to uh, verse 24, and I'm going to show you what they did. Go ahead and read on. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. Go ahead and read on. And gathered the seventy men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. Go ahead and read. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto them and took of the spirit that was upon him. Uh -huh. And gave it unto the seventy elders. Go ahead. And it came to pass that when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. That's what it said, when the Spirit came upon them, they prophesied and they did not cease. Because now they had something to say. But first, before they could prophesy, the Lord had put a Spirit upon them. They prophesied and did not cease. Go ahead, read that next verse. But there remained two of the ten, two of the men in the camp. Uh -huh. The name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other Medad. Uh -huh. And the spirit it rested upon them, and they were of them that were written, but went not unto the tabernacle. And they prophesied in the camp. And then they prophesied. But in other words, the Lord poured the spirit upon them, and then they prophesied. I got another scripture too that I can read you. You know, when the Lord poured the spirit upon Saul, Israel's first king. Then he began to prophesy, but then Saul messed up, and the, and the Lord took that spirit off of him and sent him an evil spirit upon him. But that's another lesson for another time. Let's go to Revelation chapter 10 now, and we'll pick it up at uh, verse 1, Revelation 10, and we'll begin reading at verse 1. So now the Lord uh, had the angel to take that book and give it unto Ezekiel and told him to eat that book. And Ezekiel said his belly was filled. And he spoke the word of God unto the people. Now, let's look at what went on uh, when the Lord had the angel to give that book unto John. Let's start reading here in uh, Revelation chapter 10. And we'll pick it up at uh, verse 1. Revelation 10. And we'll pick it up at verse 1. Because the Lord always do this thing by the hand of the angel people. He is a perfect example right here. Because, you know, we read where the hand came out and, 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 and shoved that, 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 that roll into Ezekiel's face and told him to eat of it and then go and prophesy unto Israel. Start reading at 10 and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. We almost there, you all. Go ahead. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, uh -huh. clothed with a cloud, Go ahead. and a rainbow was upon his head, uh -huh. and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. Go ahead, me. And his head had in, and in, and he had in his hand a little op, a little book. Open. So he said, "Now I saw a mighty angel come down, uh, 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 you know, and said uh, he had in his hand a little book." And the book was open. Go ahead and read on. And he set his right foot upon the sea, uh -huh. and his left foot upon the earth. Go ahead. And cried with a loud voice, as when an as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, uh -huh. seven thund thunders uttered their voice. Go ahead and read. And the and when the seven thunders were had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Go ahead, Seal read. up those things which the seven thunders uttered, uh -huh. and write them not. No, so whatever it was, the Lord didn't want us to know about that, whatever it was. Because he said as he is about to write, he heard the seventh thunder say, uh, 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 so he heard a voice say, uh, seal up what the seventh thunder said and write them not. So if anybody tell you they know what the seventh thunder said, you, you know what to do for them, right? <laughs> <laughs> if it ain't written, how you going to know? Okay. Now, let's uh, 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 skip down to, uh, skip down to, uh, 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 uh. Uh, 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 verse 8. Go ahead and read. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again uh -huh. and said, Go ahead. Go and take the little book which he is open in the hand of the angel. Now, uh, John said, he heard a voice say, Go and take the little book which is in the hand of the angel. Go ahead and read on. Which standeth upon the sea uh -huh. and upon the earth. Go ahead and read. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, uh -huh. Give me the little book. Go ahead. And he said unto me, uh -huh. Take it and eat it up. Go ahead. And it shall make thy belly bitter, uh -huh. but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Well, same thing that the angel said unto Ezekiel. You know, take the little book, eat it up, gonna be in your, uh, uh, it's going to be uh, uh, in, in your belly uh, sweet, and in your mouth, it will be as sweet as honey. It'll be bitter in your belly, and in your mouth, sweet as honey. Go ahead and read on. 
And I took the little book out of the angel's hand. Now, and John said, I took this little book out of the hand of the angel. Go ahead and read. And ate it up. And ate it up. So now, you know, the angel, he didn't get a uh, book on the John. John said he didn't consume it. Now that he have consumed it, look at what he's going to do. Now he can go and prophesy unto the people uh, uh, because now he have something to say. Yeah. But the point is, this is how the Lord got the message unto John. He did it by the hand of an angel, just like Jesus said by the Holy Ghost. You know, he's going to give it to the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost going to give it unto man. Go ahead, keep reading. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. Uh-huh. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. Go ahead and read. And he said unto me, uh-huh. Thou must prophesy again before many people. He said, Now you must prophesy again before many people. Go ahead and read on. In nations, uh -huh. in tongues, and kings. Before many people and nations and tongues and kings. He's going to do some prophesying before all these nations and tongues and people. You know what that means? That means that he got to be dealing with different languages and all of that That's stuff. Right. And the Lord have a way even that will be done. Yes. Let's go over to uh, Acts chapter uh, 2 and we'll pick it up at verse 1. And this will be last. Acts 2 and we'll begin reading at verse 1, 2 and 1 here. Show you how Lord had a message uh, uh, to get to all of these people that spoke all of these different languages here. And uh, uh, and uh, he going to uh, use the Holy Ghost to get the message unto the people that will deliver the message unto the other people that need to hear the message. Yes. Let's start reading here at Acts chapter 2, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. 2 and 1. Go ahead and read. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Now, this is one of God's high days here. And it is called the day of Pentecost, which days we uh, we observe as well. And they still observe them even back then. Lord gave it in the Old Testament by the mouth of Moses. And the people, uh, they were still observing uh, these days when you got into the New Testament. And on this particular day, they was dealing with the uh, day of Pentecost. And it said when it was fully come. In other words, it started in the evening at the going down of the sun. And it didn't end until the next evening at the going down of the sun. But this was during the uh, morning hours. Uh, uh, so it, uh, it was in it. That's what it meant by it had fully come. It, it hadn't just started. This was in the morning hours. Started in the evening. Uh, and then about uh, that morning, uh, mid-morning or so, it was about half over. So it, it was fully come. Go ahead and read on. They were all with one accord in one place. Uh -huh. And suddenly... There came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind. He said, then there came a sound from heaven, as of the rushing of a mighty wind. Go ahead and read. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And it filled all the houses where they sit. Go ahead and read on. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, uh -huh. like as of fire. And it set upon each of them. And then he said, there appeared cloven tongues, like as of fire. And it set up on each one of them. You ain't just tongues flying around out there loose, people. You understand what I'm saying? These tongues were attached to something. You know what they were attached to? They were attached to the angels. That's what they were attached to. Just like we read about the hand that just came out there and, 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 and told Ezekiel to eat the book. Or the hand that told John to eat the book. It was angel. Well, in, the, in John's case, it said that it was an angel that stuck the, uh, the hand in John's face and told him to eat other book. So now these are the angels here. And it says it appeared unto them as cloven tongues. Like as a fire. And it set up on each of them. Go ahead and read on. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. And began to speak in other tongues. As the spirits gave them utterance. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other languages. As the Spirit had given them utterance. You know what utterance is? That means to speak something. Now this Holy Ghost, the, it, the people that it lit up on, it was not the people that were sitting there listening. Okay. It was the people that was doing the talking. You understand right. what I'm telling you? Sure. Make it plain. That is who this Holy Ghost lit up on. Mm. It lit up on the people that was doing the talking. And who was it that was doing the talking? It was the apostles that was there that was doing the talking. So this Holy Ghost didn't come 
and light up on the people that was listening, interpreting something to them. It lit up on the people that were speaking, and then it gave it to them in different languages so that they could speak this word in different languages that everybody there might understand what was being said. That is how it's written, people. Go ahead and read on. Five. Go ahead. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, uh -huh. devout men out of every nation under heaven. He said, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under the heaven. Because it was the law that wherever Israel was, they all had to come up to the place that God had chosen on three, uh, three times a year. That was on the, uh, uh, the uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread, on the Day of Pentecost, and on the Feast of Tabernacles. That's why they was gathered there. They weren't there tearing for some Holy Ghost. They was there because the law said that they had to gather in the place uh, uh, that the Lord had chosen. And there was Jews, it said, devout men out of every nation under the heaven. Like Israel is scattered today. Supposing uh, uh, that the Lord still said that everybody had to go up to the place that he had chosen to put his name there, then we all would be scrambling trying to get to Jerusalem for Pentecost. Now, we speak English, but then we got some of our brothers who are Jews that's in the islands. Some of the islands, they speak French. So now they would have to get back up there too. So now, then we got some of our brothers that's in the islands, they speak Spanish. They would have to get back up there too. And then some of our brothers, they in different countries that speak different languages. So now you would have all of these Jews gathered there that speak all of these different languages, but they are there to get the message. Amen. You can't talk to me in French because I don't understand nothing you say. Okay. And probably can't talk to him in English because he don't understand nothing you say. So now, Lord got to do this thing in a way that everybody there will get the message, which is the word of God. Go ahead, keep reading. Now, when this was noise abroad and the multitude came together Go ahead. and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And then when the multitude came together, they were confounded, they were confused because everybody there heard them speak in their own, heard who speak? Heard the twelve speak. In their own languages. Go ahead, read on. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one uh -huh. to another. Go ahead, read. Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And then they were amazed and they marveled. And they said, not all, the, not all these that speak, are not they all Galileans? In other words, they had their tongue that they spoke in. Now they said, all these men that's doing the speaking, they are Galileans. But we all understand what they're saying in our own tongue because what the Lord did was he gave different ones this message in different languages. So now the guy that was sitting there that understood one language, he got to hear the message in his tongue. The guy that, un that, that uh, understood another language, he could understand the message in his tongue. Go ahead, keep reading. And the message was the word of God. Go ahead and read on. Eight. How hear we every man in our own tongue uh -huh. wherein we were born? Go ahead. Parthians and Medes and Elamites. Now, you know, he gave it to uh, maybe one of the apostles in the Parthian tongue. So he, when he spake, then the people that had understood the Parthian languages, they understood it. Then he gave it maybe to another one in the language of the Medes. And when he spake, the people that spoke the language of the Medes, they understood what was being said. And so on. Go ahead and read on. And Medes and Elamites uh -huh. and dwellers in Mesopotamia Go ahead. and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt uh -huh. and in the parts of Libya Go and ahead. Cyrene uh -huh. and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. Uh -huh. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. We do hear them speak in our tongues. The wonderful works of God. Because the Lord had the angel, because that's who this Holy Ghost is, to give it to the men that were doing the speaking. That is who the angel gave the message to, and then they spoke it 
in different languages so all the people that was there listening understood the message in a tongue that they could understand. So now, again, you got the, the Holy Ghost. It is the messenger, which is the angel, and it is the message, which is the word of God. And that is what you will feel with, just like Ezekiel said, when I heard that word and I ate that book, then my belly was filled. When you eat that book, then your belly too will become filled. We become filled with what? With the word of God, people. That is the Holy Ghost that you are filled with. Thank you. I hope that you understood this. <laughs>